Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and today is a propagation update video. And guys, this one's very special because all the plants that I show you today, I propagated them a year ago and they're still with me, which is really exciting because like they could have died. And also I can't believe it's been a year. It's like a little weird. And yes, guys, this update video includes my philodendron what is it called? I can't even talk. My philodendron pink princess. I still get a ton of questions about this plant and I understand why. Um, and yeah, so I'll just show you what she looks like. Um, but let me talk a little bit first. Along with the pink princess, I have my Syngonium Podophyllum Albovirgatum. This one, ooh girl. This is the plant that I propagated the most. Um, just looking at how many I have right now and looking back on what it was like it's just it's just crazy the third plant is the monstera siltipicana this plant and the leaf pattern on this plant is so gorgeous the fourth plant is the epipremnum pinatum skeleton key and I know I've said before that it's a plant that I regret buying but guys, oh my gosh, the new growth, the new foliage on this plant is just, it's just so, oh my gosh, y'all better stay tuned for that. And lastly, I have my Monstera Stanleyana. Definitely a plant that I've ignored through the whole year, but um, she's still cute. So those are the five plants I'm going to show you guys today. Um, after I talk about each plant, I'll talk about something I learned from the propagation experience or something I've learned from growing these plants in my experience. And yeah, again, I love reflecting. I love learning from my past experiences. So it was good to look back. I want to thank you guys for all the support in my favorites video for the month of August. Um, I love doing those videos. I love showing you guys all my plants. And yes, I think I might, um, call my philodendron passizanum a philodendron mcdowell i'm definitely listening to all you guys and the consensus is that y'all think it's a mcdowell and i mean for good good reason i think it's the caterpillar that's pink uh whereas a passizanum would have a greenish yellowy caterpillar so yeah thank you guys so much for all the information uh, i bought the plant as a passizanum but um, after looking at pictures, I think it's a McDowell, which is insane because that's a wishless plant for me. But anyways, let's move on. So before I start this video, if you're new here and you like these kind of videos, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram if you like plant pictures. I post pictures every single day. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a plant that most of y'all probably wanna see. The first plant is the Philodendron Pink Princess. Looking back at a year ago, this plant barely had any variegation. I think I'll put a still of the video here. And that was the main reason I want to propagate her. I now know that Pink Princess's variegation is very different. It's very unpredictable. But basically, I propagated her in water and I was, I was really happy with the end product. This was the three month update, so November 2020, and you could see that this half moon pink situation is so pretty. And I was like, okay, we got a half moon pink situation. That means that means that the rest of the plant must have more pink, you know, as it grows. I mean, I guess that was only theoretical. In my propagation update video, um, which essentially was a six month update of that plant and the propagation process, I show you the plant and it was a little bit disappointing. There was a leaf with like blocks of blush pink. And one month after that, here is a clip. There was a leaf with more of a hot pink and it was the kind of variegation that I was waiting for. And I thought there was nothing stopping this plant because I was like, okay, it pushed out one and then it pushed out another one. Um, and okay, I'm just gonna show you the plant. Okay, so let me first get the stunning leaf out of the way. Ooh, it's gonna break, oh my God. Okay, she's getting a little tall, so I'm gonna just drag her. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me, okay, I'm getting, I'm too excited. Okay, so this is the pink princess. 
She's really tall. There's two plants in here. Um, but the leaf, guys. Oh my gosh, look at this pink leaf. It is like mostly pink. And I know, and the lighting really sucks right now, but she looks really blush pink. She, I'll put a picture beside it. She was more of a neon pink. Yeah, so stunning. Again, I thought there was gonna be more pink after, but the two leaves after, although big and gorgeous, just some speckling. And then the leaf after that, same kind of situation. Oop, everything's falling. Same kind of situation. Oh yes, I found it. There was another pink leaf over <laughs> over here, guys. The second plant in here, I'm just gonna say it because it's hard to show you. Um, not a lot of pink. I think the newest leaf up here, <laughs> sadly, is the most pink. That little splotch over there. So yeah, I don't know what to do with this plant. Like, <sighs> I have heard that sometimes like maturity in the plant will bring out a, a br I can't even talk, will bring out more pink and like maybe that happened with this uh, because like you could see that there's not a lot of pink down here. Um, she's definitely maturing. Like this leaf is massive uh, compared to the older ones. But yeah, do y'all, I'm talking to you. Do y'all want me to propagate her again? I don't know if I'm, ah, oh, the pink leaf though, y'all. Let me know, just like the Monstera Thai Constellation, let me know if I should propagate her again. Let's move on to the babies. So um, <laughs> I have her in pawn right now and I don't wanna spill. So there's three plants in here. I don't know if you could see anything, but like for example, that's not pink by the way. I know it might look like pink in the camera, um, I think it just got stuck on fur leg, but I think the most pink that I can see is from this one, which is that much, and then this one, which is that. Oh, and that one. Definitely a lot smaller than the two cuttings in the bigger pot, but I'll get to that in a bit. But I guess I'll segue into the two things that I learned propagating this plant and growing this plant. With these cuttings, um, I don't know if y'all recall, but I kept on some of the cuttings two nodes and that resulted in two little baby plants stemming from two nodes just attached to the same stem. And that basically split up the energy and nutrients um, to two separate plants, so the plants were smaller. And so I think that's why this one had a slower time maturing as opposed to this one. I know that the small ones, not this one, these ones were, these two were single node cuttings from my recollection. And these ones were the ones that had two, two nodes, I think. And then I had to separate them after and that's what delayed everything. The second thing I learned is from the comment section of that video from you guys. And it's something that I've carried with me with all, you know, my propagations and it's helped me a lot. So thank you for this comment. I will put it here. But basically I was cutting off the mother leaf um, to the propagation, which was a mistake. I now know to keep those mother leaves just because of two things. Basically your newer growth can pull older. That's not what I want to say. The newer growth can pull mobile nutrients from the older growth. And also the mother leaf acts as a solar panel so it could bring in light so your plant can make more food, thus resulting in a bigger, healthier plant. And so with me just cutting off the mother leaf when I didn't have a substantial like growth really, really delayed my plant. And I think ultimately that's why this plant is a lot smaller than the mama. I mean the mama. So yeah, super cute. Y'all, I wish I recorded my, my reaction when I saw this leaf, but let's take her in one more time. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the first plant is the philodendron pink princess. The second plant that I propagated a year ago is the syngonium potophyllum albo variegata. So definitely a plant that I would recommend 
propagating, if you're new to propagating, they tend to root really quickly and the growth is just really, really quick compared to other plants. And y'all know that she's all over the place in a lot of pots, in different mediums, but I can't believe she started off as like a single plant. So I'll plug in either a still or a clip from the initial chop. I, I think she's so cute. Like, look at her. She is like so awkward. I love it. <laughs> I propagated her by single node cuttings straight into water. And then after I put her into LECA and she did so well. So, I mean, I'll put a clip here of like the three month update and like, I mean, the mama, look at the mama y'all. She did so well over the winter that I propagated her again, but this time I propagated the single node cuttings straight into LECA. And yeah, it was a success again. Um, and ever since that time, I've constantly been chopping up this plant, mainly water propagating it. And now I have like a lot of it. So I guess, I guess like, where do I start? Okay, so here is the Syngonium Albo Variegatum. So I know she looks a mess, guys. I know there's a lot of dead leaves. These are the <laughs> plants left that are in LECA. Today, I took a bunch of propagations because I want to propagate this plant in Le Chusa Pond, and that's why she looks like so weird. Um, those cuttings are in... They're in Pond, and... <laughs> There's a lot in here. They're new propagation, so some of them are not rooted, um, but I counted maybe like 20 to 30 cuttings in here, which is crazy. And I tend to propagate. I'm sure you can see that a lot of these cuttings are green. And so, I mean, y'all will see it, I think, in my plant tour video coming out this week, but that's her. This one over here, guys, is one of my favorites. This one is living in Lachusa Pond. And again, a plant. I kind of slowed down on this one because she's just so pretty. I, I didn't want to take the cutting, so I just want to enjoy her for a second. But like, can we take her in? She is a stunner. And lastly, we have the ones in soil. So this one I also took propagations from, so she looks really naked right now. But look at this new leaf. Oh, yeah, and like looking back, I probably should have put more cuttings in here because she's a little naked. Um, and then the OG, this plant has been in soil for so long. This is gorgeous. Oh my God. First of all, fully white leaf. I know it's going to die because that's basically what this leaf was. <laughs> but okay, let me just take it off. <laughs> it also has a half moon leaf, guys. That is crazy and just amazing white variegation. But yeah, can you believe, I probably have another pot in the bedroom, but I'm not remembering. Oh yeah, there's one that I propagated in pawn. She's at the very back of my table and I don't really wanna grab her, but y'all will see her in the houseplant tour. But yeah, I have so many. This is crazy. Such a beautiful plant and so rewarding. So moving on to things I've learned about this plant, this plant can root really easily in a lot of different mediums. If you saw my previous videos, I propagated in water, moved it into LECA, and then I tried propagating straight into LECA. I'm pretty sure I propagated this plant in per wet perlite and straight into pond. And they were all successes. And the second thing is that this plant is really thirsty. So, I mean, you could kind of tell in the leaves, they're very thin. I don't know if you could see that. They're very thin. And so usually, not always, plants with thinner leaves, they don't hold on to a lot of water and therefore they need more water. But I have seen my Syngonium albos benefit from self-watering planters, whether they're in LECA, pond, or soil. So I guess that's it with this one. Um, the second plant, the Syngonium Potophyllum albo variegata. Okay, so moving on to the third plant. The third plant is the Monstera siltipicana. Y'all, the leaves on this plant, they're just so stunning. I just love the pattern. I don't know if that's just me, but I love the pattern. And oh my gosh, when I first got this plant, she was only three leaves. Let me put a picture here if I could find one. She was such a cutie. I think I put her on like an oversized moss pole, but she was she was kind of causing issues. 
she was putting out a lot of skinny leaves and I think thinking back I think it was because my pH was too high or was too basic or my nutrient concentration was a little too much for it and my nutrient solution was a little different from what I use today so I chopped her up into again single node cuttings and I guess I'll put the three month update I put her back into soil because I didn't know if it liked Lekka or not and I mean here she is she's a little cutie she got that leaf shape back I think yep do you know what they're all in soil right now and I guess I'll grab them okay so let's talk about the smaller plants first and we'll leave the big one for last because I love that one so here's one of the propagations this I think I put this one in soil I don't know when but she's doing okay I think there's three plants in here this pattern here guys is just so beautiful so that's one the other three are newly propagated so they look a little wonky this one <laughs> although the leaves look okay here the new leaves I mean that one looks like not that bad this one still very young it has two leaves and the pattern y'all look at the pattern so pretty um, new growth points on both and yes and <laughs> this was the one in my plants aren't doing well video I took all the dead leaves off there's only two I think yeah there's only two that are left but I think it's gonna take a little bit for them to bounce back just because they're young okay are y'all ready for the mama this plant's crazy I am squatting guys <laughs> okay can we look at the foliage guys I'm not exaggerating the pattern on this plant is just to die for I think oh my gosh there's also a few babies <laughs> here that don't want to climb yet and here they're trying to escape they're trying to escape the pole or the plank or whatever um but yeah i know i've mentioned this before i'm trying to train it up a coco coir pole and i just can't believe like this plant started off as three leaves and like let's have like a comparison of the baby again look at the cutie and like look at this mature it's not mature yet i'm sorry look at this it's not focusing either oh come on oh my gosh look at the foliage guys this is crazy look at her okay two big things that i learned from growing this plant the first one is all about the lighting so i found in my experience this plant does not like when you give it a grow light too strong of a light the leaves tend to bend away from it and I don't know if y'all have experienced that too. I also have the same experience with a lot of my epipremnums. I've said before that I believe strongly in supplemental lighting, which I still believe in, but I guess it just depends on the plant because this one did not like it. So this one is actually in the corner of my bedroom on another shelf and it doesn't have any grow lights. And I know my room has a lot of light, but this plant is the furthest away from any light and she's just so pretty and she's doing so well everyone oh my gosh these ones also are not under grow light they're like at a bottom shelf next to the window oh oh my god I just can you what what is happening she looks so good in the screen oh my gosh okay and the second thing I learned from this plant and this might sound really funny to you guys but this plant taught me not to be afraid of growing plants in soil. <laughs> it sounds just really funny coming out of my mouth. But I don't know if y'all remember, at the time of propagating this plant about a year ago, I had close to all my plants, I think 95 of my plant, 95 of my plants, 95% of my plants in Lekka and they were growing so well. And prior to this year, I didn't really try or attempt to grow plants in soil again. And just seeing how well this plant grew kind of just eased my anxiety 
Um, I do still prefer LECA for the majority of my plants, but this one is doing just fine in soil. This plant, I feel, is the plant that started the movement of me transitioning a lot of my plants back into soil. So the third plant is the Monstera siltipicana. <laughs> so the next one is funny. The fourth plant is the Epipremnum penatum skeleton key. Now, I've said in the past that I hated this plant and I've said, and I've been very vocal about this, that I regret buying this plant. And it was just me not knowing what the juvenile state of this plant looked like. I had the impression that this plant just came out with little cute keys from the beginning. Just because when I first got her, I'll put a picture here, gorgeous, cute, small keys. And because the growth after that didn't look like that, I thought I was doing something wrong. And so I chopped her up in single node cuttings again. And like I said, because I thought I was having the same issue that I had with my Monstera Sotsbicana, I put her in soil after she had enough water roots. And so here she is at the three month mark. I don't know. I didn't watch the video before, but I'll put a clip here. I don't remember what she looked like. I yet again <laughs> was very impatient with this plant and I wanted to experiment with pawn. So shortly after that, I did put her in Lachuza pawn. I don't know. And to this day, I don't know what went on. Maybe I put it into shock because she was in water and then soil and then soil into pond in a very short period of time. But the leaves started yellowing. She wasn't happy, but everyone, <laughs> Everyone was telling me to be very patient with it, give it time, give it something to climb on. And so I did that. I pretty much ignored her, um, maybe a little too much, but I ignored her. <laughs> and then guys, this is a very big deal for me. <laughs> I'm being dramatic again, I'm sorry. Two to three weeks ago, I think, she put out a new leaf and it's a key, y'all. It's a key. Okay, let me just show the plant. Okay, so let me talk about the juvenile leaves first. So I didn't know that these leaves are supposed to look like this when they're juvenile. I thought they came out as a key shape. That was my bad. <sighs> she, and you could see that, I just hit the ceiling y'all. Um, but you could see all the leaves. And I think there are four plants in here, three or four. And then I saw something, I was like, I was like, okay, you're so close to being the classic key shape. And then y'all, oh my gosh, okay, are you ready? <gasps> Here she is, guys. This is what I was waiting for. Oh my gosh, okay. So I don't know what I did. Um, she's not under a grow light. Um, you could see that she's like attached to a stake just with plant Velcro. Oh, did you hear that? Oh my God, did it break? Um, the leaf after that also had a key shape over, I'm gonna break something, over here. <laughs> but then the one after that, it's reverting back. <laughs> this plant hates me. Anyhow, I'm just thrilled. Can we go back to the my favorite leaf? Oh my God. <laughs> You're joking. This is, this, this leaf. Are you joking? Look at her. Oh my gosh, she is a key. Okay, so y'all probably know what I'm gonna say about what I learned. So I learned to practice a ton of patience. And the second thing I learned is definitely attach something to your epiphytic plants. And I knew this was a thing before, but it kind of shows with this one. And, and and I know I'm training a lot of my, my plants upwards, but yeah, this kind of just shows you that when you give it something to climb on and it feels the support, it can give you leaves like this. Okay, so the fourth plant is the Epipremnum penatum skeleton key. Okay, so the last plant is the Monstera stanleyana. Along with the skeleton key, this is a plant that I ignored almost too much. So here's a clip from the initial chop. I used to be so anxious chopping white plants. Now it's just like an everyday thing for me. 
And here she is at the three month mark. I'm pretty sure at this time I was having issues with yellowing leaves. And so I moved the mother plant along with the propagations into soil. And yeah, like I said before, I was waiting for that variegation. Um, and she didn't really give me like as much as I wanted. And like the skeleton key, this was a time I wanted to experiment with pawn. So I put her into pawn shortly after I transferred, it, transferred her into soil. And yeah, like I said, it's a plant I ignore a lot. So there's a lot of like, runners right now um but this is her so this is really hard to show you guys this is her you could see that like for example this new leaf there's like a little tiny bit of variegation but again you have leaves like this that have none five one two three i think there's five in here <coughs> oh my god i saw my spit <coughs> oh my god hold on oh my god i just saw this now y'all okay look at this leaf Okay, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <gasps> look at the variegation. And even the leaf before that, look at that. But I got a really cute variegated leaf here. <laughs> oh my God. This is probably one of my favorite leaves now at the moment. I mean, along with a skeleton key. Lots of like crustinesses. Again, the crustinesses, y'all. Okay, so moving on to what I've learned from this plant. This plant has taught me to troubleshoot different like theories or hypotheses when it comes to yellowing leaves. The first time I saw yellowing leaves with this plant is when I had this plant in LECA and Passive Hydroponics and I didn't know exactly what it was because the foliage kept growing and it was growing really quickly but looking back the roots were sitting in the nutrient solution for a prolonged period of time. And I know now that there are some plants, including this one, uh, that don't like that. The second time is when I had her in pond. So, so I transferred this plant into pond in January, February. I probably saw the yellow wig four to six months later. And if you read the bag for Lucius of Pond, they say that their slow release fertilizer stays, you know, present for three months. And like I said, I ignored this plant, so I didn't replace the slow release fertilizer, but I have since. I came and show this. Do y'all see that future Kevin zoom in? Oh, it's fallen. But yeah, I put new slow release fertilizer. Um, a popular brand is Osmocoat. And yeah, it just parked up, gave me new growth and a new leaf over here and yeah okay so the last plant is the monstera stanleyana okay guys i guess that's it thank you guys so much for watching oh my gosh y'all we just hit 9,000 subscribers Ooh, wow but yeah guys 10,000. that is a milestone for this channel i know previously my 5k was a milestone 10k for me is a milestone so it's just really exciting. Oh my gosh, I'm like really happy. The next video coming out on Thursday is a plant chore video. I feel like this one's really boring. I'm not really selling it, but I promise you it's it's fine. <laughs> Anyhow, you're just gonna have to check that out on Thursday and next week, y'all. I already filmed it. Unless the file corrupts, I'm gonna knock on wood. That's not wood, where's the wood? The house plant tour is coming out in two parts next week, starting Monday. And it was a lot, guys. <laughs> My plants have grown so big that it's hard to maneuver, that I had to like move so many things. Anyways, if you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.